Hello guys, this is Algridis with Quick Playing Tips and today I'm going to talk about what are the limitations of your horn. So I received a question um, regarding the high range of the euphonium and somebody asked me how high can you play on a free valve non-compensating euphonium. And the answer to that is pretty much as high as it comes. So there's a way to determine whether a certain limitation is being caused by the skill set of the player or by the instrument and the flaws and the limitations of the instrument. So how do we determine that? So, and the answer is functional playing. So you can pretty much squeeze out any high note on any instrument. This is a professional type of euphonium and the difference between the professional euphoniums and the amateur euphoniums is whenever you do these extreme type of things, it's hard to make it functional with the amateur instruments. And by functional, I mean, if you go in a super high range, it's very, usually not pitch. The sound is super, super jammed, even though you might be playing it correctly. So you can still get the high notes and squeeze them out. They're just not gonna project well and they're not gonna be centered and pitched. So if you have a euphonium, which is pitch, you're supposed to be able to pretty much go probably all the way up to G with a very, very accurate pitch, uh, very, very accurate pitch, and by G I mean uh, treble. So as you can hear, every note is very, very pitched. It has a centered feel to it. Once you play it, it's not, you know, supposed to be feeling like a mouthpiece kind of centering where the pitch is all over and it's all about your ear tuning. So that is pretty much um, the difference between the amateur euphonium and um, professional euphonium. It's different though when it comes to low ranges because obviously the fourth valve is going to allow you to go to certain low notes and tune better. But in terms, of your, in terms of your facilities, you're pretty much supposed to be able to um, do most of the stuff on amateur euphoniums. And the amateur euphoniums nowadays are pretty dope. They're really, really good. And there's some companies like Sterling, uh, Jupiter, which make uh, pretty damn good amateur euphoniums. So the only difference, some of the things might not be as functionally well designed in amateur euphoniums as it is in the professional ones. So hopefully that answers your question. As always, thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Let me, uh, let me know what you think in the comment section below or post a question on my Facebook page. Follow me on Twitter. Also, give a thumbs up for this video if you can. Make sure to share it with your friends and help the channel to grow. I'm putting a lot of effort in these videos. It takes a lot of my time and I'm doing this information for free uh, in order to help younger dudes and younger girls who don't necessarily have the access to the professional type of uh, music environment, the most excellent concerts, most excellent teachers, and give them an opportunity to um, stay motivated, you know, encourage other people to take on brass instruments and therefore promote brass music. So please, do give a thumbs up, share this video, and as always, stay safe, work hard, keep motivated. Peace out. Thank you.